Hey what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and this is the building process for my custom HTPC. If you didn't watch the previous video where I explained the reasons behind this custom HTPC building, I suggest you to go check that out because you know, reasons. Anyway, here's the part list I decided to use for this custom build. I started by picking the case and uh, what's better than the No 202 by Fractal Design? This mini IDX case is perfect for a home theater PC. It looks like a slick VCR or a slightly bigger Xbox One and it fits perfectly on my TV set. I decided to buy the version with the built-in power supply. It was a choice mostly based on convenience and the fact that, even if it's not the best PSU out there, has still an 80 plus bronze efficiency with a 3 years warranty. It's super quiet and it fits perfectly in the dedicated space. As a suggestion, even if you decide to use it in a vertical orientation, I strongly recommend you to apply the rubber feet at the bottom, because those screws stick out prominently and they scratch my desk in a matter of seconds. For the CPU I decided to go for the Intel Core i3-7100. I pick an i3 instead of a more powerful i5 or i7 because I was looking for a low power processor that can be easily cooled and doesn't require too much power. No K letter at the end of the number because I won't need any overclocking capabilities at all. The Kaby Lake processor also offers the integrated Intel graphic, capable of a resolution up to 4K at 60 frames per second, and for me that I'm not an intense gamer, it's more than enough. For the motherboard I went for the Gigabyte H270N. This mini ITX comes with out-of-the-box support for Kaby Lake processors, at the contrary of the 170 series of motherboards that require a firmware update in order to recognize the new processors released by Intel. What drove me towards this mini ITX was also the incredible list of ports with built-in HDMI, USB Type-C and the handy feature of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth out of the box. With this motherboard I won't need any external peripherals or extension cards. The options of a CP cooler were a bit limited, mostly because of the low profile of the case, but also because my main concern for this computer was keeping it cool without hearing a noisy fan spinning at a top speed all the time. That's why I decided to use the Noctua NHL9i. Nothing to say about this other than that it is spectacular, super compact and solid design for an easy to install cooler so silent and so quiet that I had to open the case just to check if it was actually running. The Crucial MX SSD at 275GB and the HyperX Fury DDR4 RAM were chosen mostly due to their super positive reviews and cheap price. Great parts for an affordable build are never a disappointment. These are all the parts I decided to use for a total of $800 Canadian, around $600 US. As you notice, I didn't buy any extra case, fan or graphic card because I will mostly use this machine for streaming and development, so I won't need any GPU acceleration and therefore I don't have to worry about intense airflow and cooling solutions, other than the extremely efficient Noctua CPU cooler. Now let's take a look at the assembling process. 